Hello, it's Annie Painter with Annie's Art Institute. Welcome back. Uh, this is Lesson 8, making your own painted papers for endless cut paper, collage, three-dimensional mural projects. In another series, I'll show you some of my favorites. But today we're trying to make uh, our array of painted paper. And we'll be ending up with solids like this. We'll have some that are wadded. And we'll have some that have patterns and special effects all sorts of papers. It's typical for a class to make at least a hundred for their own use. Sometimes I will have students um, arranged at stations and they will have this label here that will tell them what kind of colors they want. We want them to mix and the station could be actually your dining room table, it could be the patio, or it could be as big as a gymnasium, which is what I love to do. The first thing we need to do is to remember the the rules of the studio, and they never change. <laughs> Only what we do changes. You will always work as an artist, whether you're my graduate student or a three-year-old. You'll do your best. I'll show you what that means. You respect the tools, materials, ideas, and each other, and keep a private workspace. That's very important, especially here where we have wet paint and large pieces of paper. I think we're ready to begin. I'll hang this one on the wall, piece of tape down here at the bottom, and remind you that we are using washable tempera paint, non-toxic. I happen to have the Crayola brand. You use whatever you like. I use magenta for my red, turquoise or cyan for my blue, and yellow. In this case, you can use sturdy butcher paper or the white sulfite drawing and painting paper. And again, that list is going to be on the website anniepainter.com. A stack of paper plates, a stack of that paper, a utility brush, a cheap utility brush is all you need because you want to cover a piece of paper with in a quick time, so you don't want little tiny brushes. You can use a half inch or an inch even. And some water in case the paint gets stiff. You're not going to be washing your brush in this or changing. You're going to have different brushes at each station, so they really don't need much, much washing. And let's see. Okay, let me check and see. Let me say I chose, I was finding myself at this station. And the Artists at my station need to make red violets and violet. And if you were with me for lesson number three in color mixing violets, you know what to do. We do not need yellow. We need magenta. And for that bright, bright, bright red violet, we don't need much of the cyan. You remember that. Just a touch. When doing the color factory, I really recommend that you have older students or family members do the squeezing for the groups of kids or even the adults so that people do not have to keep squeezing and you're wasting paint. Just let the people who are mixing focus on the mixing and have some squeezers. In this case, we're trying to make the light bright red violets and not go dark. So I am going to take that magenta, and I need quite a bit to cover a piece of paper, and touch it over here to the cyan and start to mix. And in this case, you don't need to worry about having streaks in it. That's kind of interesting for your collage projects. Oh, it's getting dark. Make enough so that you can cover a piece of paper. And begin. I like to have a white border all the way around the paper, so you might even practice how you might make a border on that paper so that you can keep a place to have a clean place to handle it. Just a visual edge. And then begin to fill in, going back and forth, back and forth. And if small students are sitting on the floor, they can't reach very well, you can just take the white edge and turn it around and they can reach better. So keep mixing light and bright and everybody at each station has their own palette and is mixing something in that range. That's their goal. So I'll finish this up now. And we have a solid. 
If drying space is at a premium in your classroom or your home, find a place where you can start taping them up the wall, just on an edge like this, starting at the bottom and taping them up the wall. And they don't mind if they touch a little bit. Now let's say I have a different station. I'll put this one back where it goes in a little bit, and I'll pick, let's see, oh, this one. <clears throat> now this is important to notice. This one, Station 5, says pure cyan, blue greens and dark greens. It's very important not to mix on this one, isn't it? Until the teacher or you decide you need to move on. You need to just make pure cyan right out of the bottle. But let's say you've done that. We're going to move on. We have only one brush at this station, so I need to go wash the brush. So now we're going to do wads. Wads are the most popular of all those special effects, and you can understand why students of all ages love to do wads. It's okay to press down here. Little hands have a harder time. We're going to do a triple wad. That means wad it three times. And flatten it out. These make the most amazing reptile skins and plant forms and insects and natural phenomenon when you're making, uh, creating with paper. And now we need to make one of those greens. So you know how to do that. You've mixed green with me in lesson number two. So let's do it. Oh, it's kind of a dark one, maybe a little more. And yellow. Now it would be so nice if I didn't make it one solid color, but I had several in here, wouldn't it? Now you keep a visual edge just like you had before. And go across and back and down. Oh, this is so beautiful. And more, maybe a little yellow in the brush there. Shouldn't have much white showing, and you really have to be careful not to push too hard or you just get a solid again. But this is looking pretty beautiful. It's very popular paper. Um, it's kind of a reward. Once you get enough solids made, then students can make these wonderful wads. And we hang our wad up. And let's see what's next. Double-sided. For double-sided, we need to pick dry paper. So let's see if we can find a dry paper. Now it's time to take some of the dry papers and make two-sided papers so that when you make your cut paper creations that stick out from the wall or you make masks or beautiful flowers, they have color on both sides. It's kind of fun to use those complements, those colors across from each other on the color wheel. So look, notice what I have here. I've been at, let's say I've been at this station that's been making these dark blue violets. Let's go to the color wheel and see what paper I need to paint. So there's where I'm mixing. I have that kind of color at my, on my palette. I go across the color wheel, and I want to get yellows, yellow oranges there. So let's see what I have back here. You don't have to be precise, but let's see. Okay, so I have a yellow. Let's see what that does then. I'm going to turn it over. It's dry. And basically all I'm going to do is to make a nice dark violet so that I get the color that's kind of across from it on the color wheel. I make my border. I fill it in. And when it's dry, I will show you what it looks like when we cut into it and you can see both sides. It's really beautiful. And then in my next series on projects, I have some of the favorites of all time that I will share with you that use these painted papers. <clears throat> 
sometimes the paint gets really stiff and especially for young painters they may need just a drop we'd never mix much water but an adult or an older helper can just give a drop of paint that will help it go just a little easier when they're painting back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth so that's done that's going to be a beautiful piece of paper with yellow and violet Next comes patterns using white, and I'll introduce white and show you how to do that next. All right, the last thing we want to do in our special effects papers is patterns and repeats. And to make a really beautiful pattern, I love to use a tint, and I use the complement. So let's imagine that I've been working at the yellow-green station, yellow-green, and I want to go across the color wheel and pick up some paper that's the complement or the opposite. So I have a piece of paper here that's red violet. And in order that we don't get a brown or a dull color, we're going to add a little white. Now this happens to be Crayola white out of a little set of Crayola paints. And so what we do is just put a little dab of white in there. And make sure that wherever you are going to make a pattern, you have white on the brush. And it doesn't matter if you have separate colors, some of the cyan, some of the yellow. And let's start making repeats. You don't have to be too careful with these utility brushes. You can get some great patterns. See what the brush will do. So that's a re beautiful repeat. Look how that color just pops. Let's see what happens if we do it on its side and add a little cyan to it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Students love to use these for masks for beautiful flowers, for murals, um, and you're not making any pictures. You're just making it like a, a patterned piece of wrapping paper. I wonder what would happen if I twisted my brush. Sometimes students tell me that in these papers they find ideas. They find a tail. They find eyes. They find all sorts of different effects. This could be a tail. They can find seeds that go in the plant they're making. So we'll finish it off. And we have a gorgeous piece of paper. These are very popular. They kind of go fast in a classroom, and so do these. Now, before the students work with these in the design projects, they should take the um, paper and cut the borders off. That just makes it a lot easier to work on a project. So often um, I would cut these off for students when I have a free half hour, or maybe there's a parent helper or an older student, or the family can just get together if you've done it as a family and cut the borders off before you create. This is the two-sided paper I wanted to show you. I cut the borders off. But just imagine how wonderful that would be if you were making flowers or butterfly wings and you could see the color on both sides. So we, let's see if we have it all. We have solids, we have two-sided, we have our wads, we have our patterns. And if you were with me and learned to do na uh, the neutrals, you would have the skill to actually add a neutral station. But you don't want to add that unless students really know how to mix the browns and tans. And then you can do all the same assignments but with a neutral station. Have a great and colorful day and thanks for joining me at Annie's Art Institute. <music>